Most people on the internet say the B-58 is bulletproof and that the older N-55 blows up on track due to oil starvation. I've personally owned and tracked both engines. Laps of the Nürburgring, British race tracks, it's all been done. And I've had zero issues on track with both engines. But here's the big question. Why does the B-58 have a good reputation for not suffering with oil starvation while the N-55 has a very bad one? And that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. What makes the B-58 so different? Why does this engine not suffer from oil starvation like the N-55 does? I'm going to be sharing with you guys facts about this engine, what BMW changed and what they revised to make sure this engine doesn't suffer on track like the N-55 does. And I'll be honest about the one big vulnerable oil issue that the B-58 does have. We're going to start off with the first thing, and that is reputation, because that's what most people buy into. Online and in the forums, the N55 is known as basically a grenade on track. You're just waiting for it to blow up, spin the rod bearings, and for it to suffer from oil starvation. But the B58, on the other hand, basically gets called indestructible. Turn the boost up and forget about it. Now, I will admit, there are some truths behind both of these things, but it's not as simple as old is bad and new is good. I want to walk through exactly what fails on the previous versions and why this B58 doesn't have any win year as many failures. Now you probably clicked on this video because either you own a B58 or you're looking at buying one. Before I explain in detail about why this engine doesn't suffer from these issues, we've got to have a little bit of context on both engines. Now, for example, this is an M240i. The previous version of this 2 Series coupe was the M235i. That had the N55 lump in it. Still a straight six, still a three litre engine, and still a single twin scroll turbocharger. And of course, the B58 can be found in most of BMW's 40i variants. For instance, the M240i or the 440i, for example. Now, BMW literally called this engine the successor to the N55. Now in their training docks, they said it could handle more heat, more power, and also it abided by a lot more emission rules when this engine first came out. So when we're talking about the oil situations with these engines, we're not just talking about two random engines. We're talking about what BMW fixed in this engine and learned from their mistakes with the previous N55. Now let's just bear one thing in mind for a second. These cars, they're not really made for track. If you want to track a car, BMW have their own M division lineup. These are M lights, and that's what we're talking about. And the reason oil starvation even comes up is likely and most likely down to track use with these cars and let's be realistic most street driving you're never ever really going to run into oil starvation unless you're driving like a maniac on the streets now one of the main flaws on the n55 is its sump design the sump is very very open find a picture on screen of it now as you can see there's hardly any baffling inside of it and there's a lot of room for oil to move around now the reason this is bad is take for example if you're on track if you're pulling high g's in the corners or very harsh braking where you're stopping and starting as you will probably guess the oil Oil goes from one corner to the other quite aggressively and this can starve the pickup. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail in today's video, we're going to be talking about why the B58 doesn't have these issues, but Kern417 did actually make a really really good video showcasing exactly what goes wrong on the N55, so if you want to see that it'll be linked in one of the corners up top. Now as you can imagine when that oil pickup gets starved and it sucks up air then obviously all of those really hot components and components that are spinning really fast get starved of oil and that is simply how you get rod bearing failure. But why is the B58 different? Why can this engine be pushed really hard on track and it very rarely comes up with rod bearing issues? Now that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to be talking about what BMW actually changed regarding the internals of this engine. And once I've talked you through that, I'll then be sharing my experiences with both cars, my N55 and my B58, and what my experiences have been on track and how I didn't get oil starvation on my N55 doing several laps of the Nürburgring. I have talked about this in previous videos, but pretty much the B58 has a closed deck block. Now what that means is the engine block itself can withstand a lot more pressure more heat and just overall you can push it a lot harder now unfortunately but all the way down there and underneath the car itself is the oil pan itself and we can't see the actual upgrades that BMW did to that oil pan without unfortunately taking it off the car which I'm not going to do but as you'll be able to see from the picture on screen you'll be able to see there are a few small baffles it's nothing too crazy but it is a massive improvement from the open bathtub that the N55 had and even though these were very subtle changes within the oil pan it basically means that that oil stays around the pickup way more than it used to compared to the previous versions. Here is a little bit of complex information, but it does play a very big part in what makes the internals of this engine a little bit stronger than previous versions. You can find this when you look it up, but BMW did quite a bit of revision with the B-Series engines. They added something called IROX coated bearing shells. I won't go into too much detail about what that actually is, but it helps with the start-stop. The actual internal components of this engine, they can be exposed to very, very brief oil film deterioration. Now, what that means is if this engine did ever see the tiniest bit 
rate of oil starvation it's not going to absolutely destroy itself like the n55 would there is a little bit of lenience towards it obviously you don't want to run these engines dry but this coating does help now again right under there well it's actually not under there the n55's oil pump was at the front however on the b58 because the timing chain is at the back of the engine the oil pump is at the rear but we do have to talk about the oil pump on this engine because that is one crucial thing which helps with this engine on track now if for example you have the mhd super license you'll be able to monitor the engine in real time on your phone now i actually loaded this up while i was doing laps of the nurburgring to monitor oil pressure and on my n55 you can notice it drop quite a bit now obviously both engines have a very similar map controlled oil pump but the b58 oil pump remains a lot more stable under different load conditions compared to the n55's one for example when i push this things around corner i very very rarely see the oil pressure drop significantly so we've talked a little bit about the sump we've talked a bit about the oil pump itself and we've also talked about the bearings being a bit stronger etc now like any engine or even a modern engine like the b58 in general that has hundreds of moving parts all at the same time there are failure points so let's talk about a few now and the b58 of course does have a few issues but they're slightly different to the n55 and it might surprise you that it's actually not really down to the baffle or the actual bearings itself it's more down to the actual oil pump failure now again we won't get into too much detail about it but in the most recent versions of the b58 there's a plastic component in the oil pump and basically compared to the gen 1 b58s which still have a plastic component in the oil pump on the newer versions it's a lot smaller and it's a lot more prone to cracking because obviously the plastic is nowhere near as dense and thick and strong and of course as you can imagine if your oil pump simply destroys itself then you're going to have no oil pressure and if you are on track say almost at red line and your oil pump fails well then as you can imagine that engine is getting no oil it's going to be completely starved and the engine is basically going to be done now that failure might come as a surprise because it's maybe not what you're thinking about oil starvation on the car itself because you were probably thinking of the previous n55 issues on track with big corners pulling insane g's with sticky tires for example and the reason i'm mentioning this failure is because i don't want people walking away from this video either having one or about to buy a b58 thinking it is invincible this engine does have issues the gen 1 is a little bit less prone to these issues than the newer gen 2 but that's not to mention that this car could get oil starvation on track for example if i went and did a lap of the nurburgring and went with my minimum oil i would be surprised if this thing didn't get any signs of oil starvation because that would be a stupid thing to do so now that we've talked about a few of these issues and we've basically covered most of the designing of the b58 i'm going to be sharing my personal experiences to what i've noticed on track with both of my two series the m240i and also my previous m235i and i'm going to be sharing how i actually tracked my m235i more than i have done this car and suffered zero oil starvation issues at all so let's close the bonnet and talk about it oh and just a little heads up on my m55 my previous car that car had no rod bearing upgrades no baffled sump no dual pump conversion from the s55 motor none of that it was a completely stock engine and unfortunately i do miss my n55 because as good as this b58 sounds it does sound pretty good my n55 definitely sounded better so what did i do to make sure my n55 didn't blow up on track and what am i going to do to make sure that this b58 never suffers from oil starvation on track we'll talk about the b58 first because that is what you guys clicked on this video to see and it might surprise you guys to know but basically the one thing i'm going to do to make sure this engine survives better on track and give it a better chance is making sure that that oil is always on the maximum level it's very important to make sure your oil is maxed on these cars and obviously if you're running a tuned b58 like i am making sure that oil is topped up and on the maximum level all the time is crucial so that's one thing i'm going to be doing for my b58 if i'm going to go on track i might do a fresh oil change and i'm going to make sure that that level is on the maximum mark but regarding my n55 which has done more laps in the nurburgring than this car and also uk racetracks as well how did that not blow up it had the same treatment as this car will have making sure the oil is topped up on the maximum but here's the little trick now this little trick might surprise a few of you what i did for my n55 was i measured the oil and i made sure it was on the maximum then i measured an extra 250 milliliters of oil in a jug or anything like that and i added that to the engine now what this did was it simply overfilled it a little bit and quite a few people do do this when they go on track overfilling it ever so slightly just helps lowering that risk obviously it's still a risk if you are going to track one of those cars but it worked out pretty well for me i still opened the car up to the maximum it could on the straights and then obviously when it came to the corners i just slowed down a little bit so that i wasn't pulling any stupid g's on the track itself but it doesn't stop there you don't have to overfill it you can do the s55 oil conversion for example 
and also there are baffled sumps up there but obviously those upgrades they cost money and it's not 100% guaranteed that you're never going to suffer from it and the same is said for this car there's no guarantee that this car isn't going to suffer from oil starvation it can still happen but it is a lot less likely because BMW knew about the issues with the previous versions of the inline six engines they put in these cars they made a few changes they updated it and now this car's running 460 horsepower reliably and it's great fun but there is one sacrifice with the b58 and that is the fact it doesn't sound as good now here's one thing for you guys in the comment section now of course the good thing with the b58 is you don't have to worry about oil starvation but it comes with the cost that the engine doesn't sound as good as the n55 so let me know in the comment section what you guys prefer would you prefer risking oil starvation and having a better sounding engine or getting a b58 and having that reliability but then a car that doesn't sound as good and of course one thing to mention quickly is the ogm2 that comes with an n55 that is completely different to the ones found in the 335i 235i for example the b58 still sounds good listen to this but i'll always be biased to the sound of the n55 it definitely is one of bmw's best sounding turbocharged inline six engines there we have it guys that's going to be a wrap for today's video if you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you want to see loads more content on the bmw itself and also the polo gti apart from that i'll catch you guys in the next video thank you very much for watching bye for now